I'm sure I just saw the recording start it go back to one again for some reason, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to those two geeks. My name's Alex, his name is Joe. Uh, it has been, well, it, it hasn't actually been that long since he and I chatted, despite the week break in shows, because uh, it's only Sunday morning, so we are a yeah. full week schedule again. Um, and those of you listening who also caught last week, it is less than 12 hours less than 10 hours actually since i recorded last night's uh, episode so um as as promised we are going to dive into a chat about indiana jones and the dial of destiny uh there will be spoilers going forward joe hasn't seen it because nope. you told him i was going to watch it thursday and time just doesn't always allow doesn't care about spoilers um no. again it's one of the, it's one of those movies where you know you're going to watch it or not you know whether you're going to enjoy it or not Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think that even despite that, like within Indiana Jones movies, you can watch those over and over and over and over and over again, and you always pick up something new, like a joke, a thing here and there, a yeah, thing in the background, it, right? So knowing the plot mm-hmm. usually just helps to you enjoy that movie. Not you can't say that for everything. Um, but so before we get into that, I think we're also going to inevitably talk about toys. Um, Absolutely. And yeah. despite this being a Sunday and despite collision happening yesterday, I did not see it because I was yeah, doing other things. It. So we, um, I have thoughts on it. I've got guesses on what, on what happened, but I won't actually go and um, we won't, probably won't talk about that too much this this. This I was gonna say this night, but I meant tonight or this episode. Yeah, it's a little wacky. When whenever we do Sundays, it kind of throws us off, you know. It does. But, it does. but yeah, but with, so fun. without further ado, so it, Kingdom uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. First things first, there is no after credit scene. You the, mean Dial of Destiny? Yes, I do mean Dial of Destiny. Holy Jesus! Great so start. We're, we're both yeah we're, we're both dealing with heat at the moment and it's it's yeah. yes it's only um 10 a.m eastern it's already starting to crank up and obviously we don't have air conditioners on or i don't have an air conditioner because it's loud as fuck if i have one and it really? doesn't it just doesn't work in the office so yeah my, my brain is going to slowly melt as the show goes on folks enjoy that That's uh, all right. so, <laughs> oh, sorry, so i died of destiny um, first things first, so the, the inevitable questions that people, I think, have been asking, no, there's no after credit scene. There hasn't been one in any Indiana Jones movies. Correct. Right? So there's not going to be any, I, I, it makes sense there wasn't one. I did. Well, I like that. I'm glad. Okay. Yeah, same. I th- it, like, to me, it keeps the consistency. Um, yep. so there's no, no after credit scene. Um, it is better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Awesome. And now, I'm saying that as someone who actually enjoyed Kingdom of the Crystal Skull to a point. <sighs> it, I didn't. It's it's definitely the the weakest of the five movies. No, uh, 100%. but I I didn't I didn't dislike it. Like, you know, I I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, is Dial of Destiny better than one of the original three? No. Wow, it's, not one of them. I see. Okay, so I, I said this last week. Ra- Raiders of the Lost Ark is a masterpiece. It is. It absolutely um, is. Last I had Crusade a friend watch it for the first time, and they said, wow. Right? L- last Crusade is phenomenal. Absolutely yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, that's, that's, those are my two personal favorites. The, the weakest of the original is, a lot of people have said, is Temple of Doom. However, yeah. that's my personal favorite, because that's what got me into Indiana Jones. Right. So with that context, Dial of Destiny doesn't hold a candle to the others. Now, I'm also okay. saying this as someone who has watched the original three movies dozens and dozens of times. Like, I, I would always have them on as a kid. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the trope of, oh, I wore out the VHS. I actually did wear out the VHS we taped in the, one of the, I think, Temple of Doom off the TV with. So, like... We we taped it multiple times because I would watch them so often. So yeah, I've only seen Dial of Destiny once. I I think it's fantastic. It is obviously a different Indiana Jones. I mean, the yeah. man is, that the character is seventy years old in this. It's set in 1969. Indiana Jones is born in 1890, July 1st, 1899. If you really want the obscure fact of the day. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that puts him at, in, I think, Temple of Doom is technically a prequel, I, I've discovered, years later. So he's about 35, 36 in that, 36, 37 in Raiders, and then around 38, 39 in um, Last Crusade. Okay. Roughly 50-something in um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, mm-hmm. and 70 in uh, in this one. So it's still plausible that he can be active. He's definitely not as active as he has been. And right. there's a there's a great moment in it where he's doing mm-hmm. something and he's kind of climbing a wall and and then he just stops. And uh, Helena, the character with him, is like, "What is it? Why have you stopped?" He's like, "Everything." hurts he's like yeah. i've got plates in one leg i've got screws in the other it's like i just i'm thinking everything hurts sort of thing like you know he just can't physically go on at that point yeah and there are great moments like that where he's still got flashes of the man he used to be but he's got to be a lot smarter in what he does and there are callbacks to earlier movies yeah. all all over the place like there's um do you remember the scene in oh, what am I saying? Do you remember the scene? The scene in Raiders where uh, the guy whips out a sword, flaps it around, it, and Indy shoots him. Yes, yes, yeah. There's a, there's a scene with the guns. Yeah, there's a brilliant callback to that in the uh, in in the current movie. Like this is, it's both a br- really good movie, and it's mm-hmm. also a very powerful nostalgia fest and tribute to fans and to. Yeah. The, you know, to the early movies and consequently to the fans that have grown up with and love those movies for the last 30 mm-hmm. some years so right it's i hesitate to put it on a level with the other three or the first three because those are just for me so iconic yeah i not leave this disappointed um that's good that's what i wanted to know was like it, the other question is i i still want to know more you're not yeah. done with this no no ramble. Is it a worthy ending to Indiana Jones? Because they're touting it as the end. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. That's what I wanted it's, to know. I, I don't, th- I'm, I'm not, despite us saying we're going to spoil it, I am not going to spoil the end. Like, if, no, you, please, if you really want to look it up, you know, like Joe and, and, and everyone listening, you can do. All I will say about the end is it's worth the end. It's a worthy ending. I yeah. don't see how they're going to continue it from here if they wanted to. And I don't think they can because Harrison Ford has actively said, I'm He's Indiana done. Jones. This, this isn't Indiana Jones isn't, is me. I'm done. We're done. Right. So like, yeah. even before going into it, you knew it was the end. And mm-hmm. by the end of the movie, you, you know, it's the end. And that's good. Now, what is the actual time period it takes place? Like, as he's older 1969 okay so in the 60s all right yeah is there a call back to his son from crystal skull they do mention what happened to him okay Uh, i think do you want me to tell you like i'm happy to tell you yeah tell me what happened it's so uh, at some point between crystal skull and um diet of destiny mark enlisted Mm -hmm. in the u.s army my guess is probably the Korean War. Yeah. And he doesn't come home. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, it's that's kind of like you know, like it's it, initially it's a throwaway line, but then he delves into it a bit more yeah. uh, down the road. And knowing that explains so much about his situation in the beginning. Mm hmm. Um, because like he you know he he says like uh him and marion couldn't deal with the loss like they yeah you know they they drifted apart because of that like they they just couldn't deal with it um that makes sense that, that that's that's a really good point that makes right great sense. so it's it's you watch it and you're like my god like it's i know he's not going to get an oscar for this like there's mm-hmm. no like they I feel like the Academy are just never gonna give Harrison Ford the Oscar. But yeah. Like for me, I I think he deserves it. Like there there are Frank moments in this, Jones? Honestly, there are moments in this in this movie wow. where like, holy shit. And it's not like the timbre of his voice changes, it's just the emotion on his face every as he as he's telling the story. It's mm-hmm. 
and the, the problem is I find that the Oscars tend to focus on actors who have had a massive transformation, you know, mm-hmm. in like physicality, etc. He right. he doesn't like this is Indiana Jones is so clearly just Harrison Ford putting on a different outfit and having fun mm-hmm. that it, it it you forget that there's actually sometimes a character there. It's you know you've seen Harrison Ford play Indiana Jones in space. Right, like mm-hmm. it's it's yeah, not yeah, something you wouldn't have seen him do before, but there's just something about moments in this film where you're like, my God, he's good. Like he is a very underrated actor by the people who do the awards and shit. Yeah, he's one of my favorites, anyway. Absolutely, and this this isn't going to do anything to dispel that. Yeah. Now he's never won an an Oscar. I I say that the last time I looked into it, he hadn't. Um, sure he didn't win one for um, The Fugitive? I mean, yeah, I, like, if I'm, um, he said he won Best Actor in 1986. What did he win it for? The Fugitive, maybe? Uh, no, The Fugitive's 90. Fugitive no, was 90. Was, right? Uh, hang on, let me uh, go back to. Uh, yeah, well, you're looking that up. So. Yeah, you're looking that up. That sounds great. Um, you know, that makes me happy. I will see it when it goes on inevitably Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stream it. I mean, I would have seen it in the movies if I was going to see it in the movies. Um, I'm trying to save like movie going experiences for movies that I know are just going to be like, you know, they're worthy of it and stellar. Like Guardians was a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite movie of the year so far. Um, and spider-man across the spider-verse would be a close second and the only reason that's not number one is for some reason i'm hesitant to put the animated movie above the live action that's fair i don't know yeah i mean in all actuality they're both as sophisticated and unbelievably well told and acted is just as well but it's Mm -hmm. just for some reason i give the guardians the nod is it's i think i give guardians the nod because it brings back the mcu for me to its prominence like yeah it's like okay it's here we are again this is why i fell in love with the mcu and um you know i'd want to keep the train going i don't have any hope because you got marvels and i'm like "Eh." i'm looking forward to that because i did enjoy um i i did enjoy captain marvel and and miss marvel uh skipping back to what i had said harrison ford was nominated 1985 for witness he has not won Wow, I did not. He'll never win it then. I, I don't. He had, no. no, like it, he's a, he's eighty years old, right? Like unless he puts yeah. in does does something that they're nah, going no, to enjoy, like he's um, he going to win it for Thunderbolt Ross. So I mean, you know, it's uh, no. I would laugh it, so fucking hard if he did. It would be well that's, deserved, that's, but I would laugh would. so fucking hard. Yeah, that's, that's the only time he's been nominated was for that one. He had the fugitive. He had Air Force One. He had, um, you know, he had that other movie where I'm trying to think of what movie it was. Maybe I'm mixing it up, but like the gun is made of wood. Oh, I think I might be missing something up with a different actor, but the fugitive, I'm definitely not mm-hmm. messing up. The fugitive was fantastic. Air Force One was good. It's it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Oh, Gary Oldman makes that. Yeah, movie. no, I love it. It's great. Yeah, but um, the Fugitive is just a stellar movie. That that was like I think his his big big movie for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Cri- Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I remember when that first came out, and I love Indy. It's always a good romp. I liked the inclusion of his son. I thought it was cool. And at that time, Shia LaBeouf or Shia LaBeouf was like on all cylinders. Like he was mm-hmm. just firing out movies. Um, you know, he had. The movie Disturbia, which I really always liked. Um, he had, um, you know, all the, the Transformers movies going on. And he was just, he was kind of like the soup du jour of, of that year. Like everyone just wanted him in movies. And I was fine with it. I just, I hated how out of the box Indiana Jones got in that movie. Mm-hmm. Una, just talking to aliens because that was just so fucking left field for Indiana Jones. I don't it, know what Spielberg is going for. Yeah, it's funny. Like I, I think 
for me, they were going for the uh, it's the fifties, aliens were soup du jour in the fifties, and yeah, of course. At least this way, you can you can frame it as a uh, ancient, you know, gods, whatever could easily have been aliens. And I know that's a theory that's been going around for decades, and right. that's fine. Like I, th- I think playing into that for the the time that that movie came out, that's when that theory had really taken prominence because of the ancient yeah. alien show or that theory. Yeah. So I can see it. It wasn't my personal favorite because I'm not a big, like I've said it before and I'll say it again happily. I'm not the biggest sci fi fan when it comes to aliens and stuff. It, it's just never really been my thing. I, I don't know yeah. why. Um, oddly, ancient aliens like that, I, I tend to be a bit more interested in. Mm hmm. Uh, but I I haven't been a Star Trek fan I think for that reason like I've, I've always yeah, rather I, like the um yeah the adventure films of Indiana Jones uh, yeah. Quartermain that kind of stuff so yeah. I get it like it's I think for me that's why it's the weakest of the three is that the is specifically the aliens part everything else I really enjoyed if for uh, uh, Crystal Skull like I I love the part where Matt Lang says to uh, Indy like you're a teacher. And his reply is part time. As he's standing there like a complete badass with his jacket yeah. hat, right? Like, so there's there's a lot I do like about that movie. Um, I'll watch it again and eventually, like I've seen it once or twice, and I'll, I'll happily watch it again. But yeah, I mean, I liked the opening of it when yeah. you know you had the car chase and all that, and you had the Nazis and all that was really good. But I hated. Like some of it just was so out there, ridiculous for me, you know. Um, yeah, I thought Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf did a great job. I mean, I, I thought he did a good job with his script and what he was given. But you know, the parts where they're swinging on the vines like Tarzan, like that. Just I remember seeing that in the theater, going, "This is utterly ridiculous crap! Like, why are they swinging on vines like mm-hmm. effortless?" It just that bothered me, and. I didn't mind the fact that aliens were brought into the lore as far as a notion. Like, if it was just, like, kept as the Crystal Skull was so valuable because of the possibility, and it, like, it's when they went full on trying to reveal the actual alien itself and, like, the, you know, the power of the skull. I was like, holy shit. We just went into, like, left field Fonzie jumped the shark territory from happy days. Like, what did they do? And it hurt the franchise for a long time, I feel. I think it hurt it for a very long time for that fact. You know, that was like a Batman and Robin Joel Schumacher moment. Like, what yeah, they doing? Like, I, I don't disagree. And I, I said he was Mutt Lang earlier. He's actually Mutt Williams. So I'm not sure where he got Mutt Lang from. But yeah, I was like, where's Mark Lang? Yeah. So I correct that one. But yeah, like it's um, I I don't again like I don't disagree like it was, I enjoyed it. It was fun, um, but it it doesn't. I don't think it it's anywhere near as good as uh, the OGs. The OGs and sorry no. So like Crystal Skull isn't isn't as good as uh, Dial of Destiny, which, which is great. It's I I I wonder like. I genuinely wonder if you watched, if you hadn't seen them all at all and you watched them all in order, which would be your favorite? Because I, I think there's going to be a case made for Dial of Destiny being in contention to not be number four. Like, I can easily see it being, for some people, number three. Yeah. Right? Like maybe, said, maybe number two, depend, for, depending on how it how the story, yeah. how it ends the, sto- the series, how it ends the story. Uh, there's a fantastic sequence at the beginning. The movie opens up in 1945, so before Crystal, before you know, before Crystal Skull, where you see a, a slightly older Indiana Jones from Raider, uh, Last Last Crusade. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you get that for almost, I think it must be about 20 minutes. I didn't, I didn't look at my watch the time because I was really enjoying it. But you get it for almost 20 minutes in the movie, and um, and it it does have have that. That gives you the Indiana Jones is an action hero. This is what he does. This is who he is phase of things. Mm -hmm. And then you see like 20 years later, 30 years later, like, all right. So he's definitely not the guy he was like, clearly not the guy he was. And over the course of um, the movie, like, you you know, he says all of the injuries he's had, like they've taken a toll on his body. Like he was shot nine times. 
Um, like, and I think at some point you can actually, I don't know if they did this deliberately of Harrison Ford just has a conveniently placed scar that looks almost like a bullet wound or something. But mm. there's, they, there's a couple of scars you could see on his body as he's walking around uh, really early in the movie. But you, this is before he said how many times he's been shot. So um, there, there is indeed a topless Harrison Ford scene. It's actually genuinely funny. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I, I, I enjoyed it. I would highly recommend if you if you're a fan of indie, go see it. It's it's well. And that's watching. that's all that matters. That's the best yeah. part of it is that you know, you're not getting a nostalgia tread, for the sake of nostalgia, to just you know, pop, a buy rate or some rate you know or some you know, um, movie numbers, and mm. that makes me very happy because that's what I want to see because. Unfortunately, you know, I I went into it on my movie rant with as much as I adore Michael Keaton and, you know, that property and that version of Batman did what I got from Michael Keaton was serviceable, but wasn't like it wasn't the Michael Keaton. I remember, you know, yeah, like Michael Keaton's one of my favorite actors. I tend to drift towards the actors who play iconic roles that like are usually franchises for some reason. That's just always the way I've been. And, um, you know, Michael Keaton, obviously Batman, uh, Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones and Han Solo. Um, it, I, I think I like his portrayal of Indy better than Han Solo. I think I always have, mm-hmm. um, I he's agree a super with that. archeologist. That's really yeah. what he is. You know, he's a superhero archeologist. Um, but, um, so it's like, with Michael Keaton, I don't think he played his heart out into this movie. He didn't, like, give it his all. He had a fun time. It's very noticeable that he enjoyed what he was doing on his part of the project. Yeah. But I don't... And that's a thing, too. I think The Flash is a tale of multiple projects going on within one project that some people do their parts really well and others drag it down really hard. And it just doesn't mesh together when they try to glue the all the pieces together. It's like mm-hmm. a little funky, but it, it it just it doesn't work the same way. Like like you said, like Michael Keaton might have done the best that he could for he you know for what yeah. he had, but then you've got other other factors around it that just don't work. I yeah. find that Indiana Jones is like I, I, now I I say this, but I don't know how much of it is Harrison Ford putting his heart and soul right. into the movie. Or it's just Indiana Jones is so close to who Harrison Ford is that he doesn't have to think about playing the character and he just exists yeah. in the role. Either, either way, um, like the the subtle things he did, and again, like him limping a little bit here and there, or him just clearly having a harder time moving, mm-hmm. is that characterization that he's putting into it, or is that the fact that the man is eighty years old in an action movie? Right. right? Like yeah. how how much of it is him? Art versus life. And how much yeah. of it is just him existing in the role? At the end right. of the day, it makes the movie better, so I don't care. Yeah. Other, you know, and I say that it sounds awful, but I don't care whether it's Harrison Ford making a brilliant acting choice or he mm-hmm. doesn't realize he's doing it. Like for me, it made the movie that much better, and that I think is what matters. Is that? And yeah. that's why. That's why I think that if anything, he won't he won't even get a nomination because how much of it is again an 80 year old man doing it's like you, you've seen elderly people in your day-to-day yeah. life grandpa whatever right. you know they're, they're moving around and all of a sudden they just have to take a break like my dad is yeah. in his mid to late 70s like he's right early 70s sorry he's gonna kill me if he ever hears this yeah but he's he's yeah. in his early 70s and he he would move around not too dissimilar to indiana jones in this movie um Actually, no, he would probably be a bit easier, have a bit of an easier time, but then he also doesn't have metal plates in his legs and doesn't have, like, the is, has never had to be dealt with a bullet wound. So there's right. definitely th- wears and tears on Indy's life that Ford yeah. embodies. Um, whether intentionally or not, I, I don't know. And ultimately, yeah. I... I always find yeah. the character... Um, exploration of an older character at the end of their journey like an older prominent character at the end of their journey is usually my favorite iteration of any Mm -hmm. character like i love 
Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. The concept of a grizzled, aged Bruce Wayne who's had enough, who has to take different chances and still do what he does is so fascinating more compared to a young and his prime can't do anything wrong Bruce Wayne. Same with, you know, Wolverine's over 100 anyway when we see him in the X-Men. But when Old Man Logan comes around, Mm -hmm. I think that characterization is one of the best characterizations in some of the original Old Man Logan is one of my favorite stories for that take. I've always gravitated towards the gunslinger at the very end of his rope and down to his like last bullet type of scenario. Yeah. Those always get me because that's where you get to like the heart of the essence of who a character is like old Luke Skywalker. I've always, I love that, you know, like those final, you know, samurai moments where they're just, they're done. They got not much, but they like, it reminds me of a song from a, um, a country music artist. I don't know if you've ever, you really ever listened to country music. As I get older, I appreciate it more. My dad really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's not, my favorite thing in the world and when i say that i will never intentionally put it on to listen to by myself right that said so my my wife does enjoy some country music artists so if if there's nothing on in the house i'll like you know what i don't mind this one so i'll yeah. i'll tell alexa to play that and that's more a it, you know as much a i don't mind it i know she'll enjoy it we'll put it on as it is a i'll put this on so i don't have to listen yeah. to one of the other ones Yes. Yeah, so basically, it just reminds me of those those characterizations remind me of a Toby Keith song mm-hmm. where he says, you know, I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. And that's yeah. kind of like that whole I could do it one more time, one last rodeo. And that's what I was hoping for Indy is that you get a worthy last rodeo, because if you're going to tout it as, you know, the end of Indiana Jones, which is very iconic, very near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. You know, do it right. Plus, also yeah. in an era where you know everyone's like, "Oh, if it does well, we're going to have a sequel." Listen, you don't really have that to play around with in real life with Harrison Ford. I mean, even if you use all the de aging um, effects in the world, the man is still aged in real life. That this is got to be his last one. I mean, if it's I, not, it's insane. It, it it's there is no way. I I genuinely and I, I I say this being very cautious of spoilers. I yeah. cannot see a way that they're going to add, have him back. I I, right. I can't. I the franchise could continue with one of the other characters. Yeah, maybe that's what I, Yeah, but it's not gonna like it. It wouldn't be Indiana Jones, and it wouldn't be um, like for me. Indiana Jones is very much a set in the thirties, like to the fifth. You know, like yeah. the thirties is that's when it needs to be. So if you're gonna have another show like that have it with a contemporary of indiana jones and then have him mentioned in the background and and have it you know say uh, say um i'm only saying this name because i'm looking at it on my bookshelf but like you know joe simon you know the adventures of uh, joe simon in this and have it in indiana jones font so it's clearly within the same universe but maybe and then maybe you hear people talk about indies in egypt or indies in france or yeah. wherever right like so you have it like that as opposed to right. trying to tie in with his adventures and may- maybe uh joe simon goes to egypt just after indy was there or whatever so like he's always either just I, missing him or he's ahead of him and yeah i agree with that because this is a case of it's not a mantle i want to see past no i believe it, you know, he's Indiana Jones. I don't have any interest in ever seeing a reboot, but somebody recast it as, you know, Indiana Jones, the character itself. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind, a, you know, somebody in the Indiana Jones universe having, a, you know, a contemporary um, adventure at the same time. Like you just said, that would be perfect. Mm-hmm. If studios ever heard this, that'd be the only way it really would be acceptable. Otherwise, it would be a complete rubbish. But um, no, I'm very glad to hear it your kind thoughts on this because when you originally said i want to talk about indiana jones i'm like "Uh oh he's gonna have a flash moment like me and then that's why i asked that one question i said is it at least better than crystal skull and you were like oh it's definitely not worse and i was like all right 
then at least there's going to be some praise for this movie. I didn't expect the high praise coming out of you. So it sounded like you just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed it. it. Yeah, no, like, this really is a case of I really enjoyed it and I couldn't wait to talk about it. Um, yeah. It's like I said, it is definitely. There's going to be some people that don't like it, and that's fine. Like, sure. you know, not every movie is for everyone. Um, yep. I I I think this was and I think it was brilliant. I, I I really do. I really enjoyed it. It is again. It is not as good as the original three for for my money. Right. Um. But I'm I'm with you. Like I, I think is the ending to the story. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. It ends the story on a high note. That makes me happy. So right. I and and. To it. That's what I wanted to see. Like, if you if you can go and see this in the theater, I would recommend it because you're mm-hmm. never going to see another Indiana Jones movie in the theater again. True, like, you know, that you haven't already seen. You are right. never going to see another right. Indiana Jones movie in the theater again. That as, as a new release, like maybe yeah. at some point uh, someone's like, "Hey, we're gonna we're, we're gonna play the Indiana Jones films in the theater," or like Disney are doing with. Um, their Disney 100, they're releasing some, some yeah. of their favorites. So, like, Pirates is coming back out. Well, oh, damn that's... right, I'm going to watch Pirates in the theater, uh, the first Pirates in the theater again, because I never actually saw that one in the theater. Yeah, so, Pirates yeah. was fantastic in the theater, obviously. Yeah, the... so that's what I mean. Like, unless, you, unless you've lived under a rock and you haven't heard of Pirates of the Caribbean and you've never seen one, and you've never seen it and never heard the theme tune, great, mm-hmm. brilliant, this is for you, but most people who are interested in Indiana Jones are of the age where maybe they didn't see the first three in the theater because they were too young. Like, you know, grow up in the 90s, that's the kind of thing that all of a sudden, oh, this is a fantastic, like the young Indiana Jones Chronicles, right? Like, so then you go back and watch yeah. them. Um, may, maybe you did watch them in the theater as a young adult and now you, you're ready to end the story and this is how you do it. Like you're, you're not going to see another Indiana Jones movie in the, in the cinema again, and you're not going to see another Harrison Ford movie in the theater like this ever again. I, I, I think I, and I, I say that because the guy is 80 years old. There's only so yeah, much. He can. Yeah. So the hard sell you just gave me, I think I'm going to go. I see would, I would recommend. And again, like it's the same with anything you go into a movie wanting to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. Right. Like, and I think this is one of those where you can go in probably like, oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. But for me, everything works. The way he gets involved with the story works. Like he, unlike in yeah. Raiders and Lot and uh, Crusade and even Temple of Doom, he's not looking for anything. Yeah. It, it, he just doesn't want to deal with anything anymore. He's, he's fed up. He doesn't yeah. have it in him. And, and, he, and he's done. Yeah, those are the best characterizations. Like, yeah, no, you, the way you put it that, you know, you'll never see another brand new Indiana Jones movie in the theater again, other than it being a re-release, really hits home because that was part of the partial thing where I everyone expected, again, I'll go back to it, The Flash to do so well because you're never going to see another Michael Keaton Batman in the theater ever again. Like, that. that's it. No. You know, so, but it just wasn't enough. You know what I mean? Like what you saw didn't I gave you like glimmers, but it wasn't like I, I think I the different the difference is is that Michael Keaton is a is guest is guest starring in or Batman is guest guest starring yeah. in a flash movie. Whereas right. Indiana Jones is the focal point of Indiana Jones and the Dial yeah. of Destiny. Now, Michael Keaton has proven, you know, he, he's aged really well. He mm-hmm. can still move around like a son of a bitch. Like for a 71 or whatever he is, he, he's still strong. He's over the past couple of years taken on different movie roles that would keep him in shape. Like, and he did that on purpose for Batman. You know, when it got announced that he was going to be doing that, he did this other like action movie you know, where he had to do a lot of his own stunts. And, you know, the problem is Andy Buschetti doesn't know Batman. I, I am very, very, Barry or whoever wrote the screenplay has no clue who Batman is. No clue. Doesn't even get like the basic context of Batman. It was so all over the place characterization from Batman, other than the look and the feel and a lot of the nostalgia just from Michael Keaton himself. 
it just was like, this isn't Batman. And you'll see it when I got to give the flash a rewatch when it comes on streaming, just to see mm-hmm. if I'm not so freaking harsh and biased, but I think I'm going to retain a lot of it because it just Zod really kills it for me. Zod really bo- bothers me so bad that Michael Shannon just gave such a phoned in lackluster performance. And it's just like, you know, it is what yep. it is. But the next movie I'm looking forward to is a cartoon movie, obviously. But I'm looking forward to Mutant Mayhem with the Turtles. I'm so freaking stoked for that. And that's what I've been doing for weeks. It's just kind of hunting Mutant Mayhem stuff. One, it's extremely cheap and affordable. They're 10 bucks for a figure, and they're really good figures. Mm-hmm. And two, it's just I haven't had a Ninja Turtles movie in the theater in a very, very long time. Last one was an animated one, but it was 2007. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. and it's different. It's the first movie where the turtles are being voiced by actual teenagers, which I think will add to it. I think so, because you forget how young they are half the time. Yeah, exactly. And also, I like the idea that we're not going back to Shredder and the foot soldiers right out the gate again. We're doing just pure mutants and it will like the turtles feel, you know, they don't belong in the world. And, you know, the mutants, um, you know, might convince them. And so there's a lot of different ways you can go. And it's got a really good voice cast. So I'm like, all right, you know, am I cool with Splinter being like a freaking hipster again? No, not really. But, you know, we'll see what happens when it's on screen. I know Seth Rogen loves the Turtles. Mm-hmm. Um, the trailer that I saw, even just the music choice from a Tribe Called Quest, Can We Kick It? Uh, I'm like, geez, he just kind of gets it. He gets the spirit of what these kids are. And like, I just want to, I see that on the screen so i'm super excited for that that's in a couple weeks but i think i'm going to squeeze in indie mm. so you know just to give you um context of this james mangold is the director he also directed logan oh there we go that's a good that's good right Very, like, that's good but to have yeah, so and he directed 310 to Yuma, uh, Walk the Line. Like he's done some really good stuff. Yeah. So I wanted to before we go into toys to end with toys, I wanted to talk about something that I just watched last night. I've been seeing like, you know, advertisements for it and clips of it, not quite sure what to make of it. Um, it's on Adult Swim. It's this show called My Adventures with Superman. And I'm like, I've heard huh. of this. Yeah, and it's on Adult Swim. And it, I was like, oh, is this from like Lois's point of view? Like, what is it? And it's definitely younger versions of Lois, Jimmy, and Superman. I mean, Lois, Jimmy, and Clark, who are the main characters. And they're all interns at the Daily Planet at the same time. They're all trying to get their big break. And they went with the trope of, you know, um, Perry White being African-American, just like Lawrence Fishburne. And he's like really no nonsense, grizzled, you know, uh, editor in chief. But I watched it last night. It was really fucking good. Like it's 25 minutes. It was really good. Now, is the animation a little childish a little bit at times? Yeah, it's weird. It it feels like an anime at times, like Naruto. But is the story, the voice acting is phenomenal. The story is a little paper thin. But what it does is it opens you up with Clark's origin two minutes in, and then that's it. So you get a retelling of Superman's origin within two minutes. And it reminds me of um, when Frank, um, not Frank, uh, what's it called? Grant Morrison, All-Star Superman. You open up the first two pages. It's all panels. You know, it's like 16 panels. You get Superman's origin within 16 panels. Or, you, or it's in one, within one page. Everything you need to know is condensed in that one page, like, and you don't feel like you missed anything. That's just it. Like At this point, we all know who Superman is. If you yeah. don't, you don't need much of a recap, because ultimately it doesn't matter as much as, um, no. as who he is now. No, and it's really good. The animation is fluid. Um, like I said, it's like an anime a little bit, because the the way it's shot and the way it's like animated but i love the characterizations i think clark is like perfect lois is really good but they do a twist where lois isn't like you know hey smallville keep up and you know 
she's smitten with Clark at the very beginning. Oh, that's interesting. Like, but she won't like admit it. And Jimmy's African American too, and he's okay. like this um, super alien conspiracy. You know, everything's an alien conspiracy. Like whatever the story is, he's like, oh, but this is this, and he has a podcast and it has like five um, subs, and it's just like he. It's just a really fun fucking show. Mm-hmm. Where it lacks is the villains are absolute dreck. They're going with like intergang off the bat, and it's just like I I need this more they got to get a better villain they only had two episodes so far i watched both but i'm like what in the holy hell the villains are just wretched but it's a more adult show it's not for kids and that's why hence it's on adult swim and um you know they also take jor-el from the later comic books where jor-el was leading an armada against the earth and like Clark forgot everything wrong. Jor-El has an eye patch, like Mr. Oz style from the yeah. Superman comics of like 10 years ago. That's the Jor-El they give you. you. And Clark finds, you know, the Kryptonian spaceship. It's buried underneath where he lives in Kansas. Both his parents are alive. And, and this, it's very refreshing to have him around and still supporting him. It's not like he's come of age and one of them are dead or both of them are dead and he's on his own. They're still very much supporting him. And Clark, as a kid, you know, you get flashback at the beginning of each episode. Clark, as a kid, is really trying to find out who he is. He's like, what the hell's going on with me? He's like, I'm not your son. I don't belong. Like, he's very sad. But, mm-hmm. like, they're supporting and they're like, you're a son no matter what, but you need to know. And so I don't know how their neighbors wouldn't know when he unearths the spaceship and it, like, lights up the sky. But, you know, it's a cartoon. But, um, it, there's great characterization moments that you don't see in normal like Superman iterations where like Clark unshovels everything under a big pile and then goes into the ship and he's so rocked with what he finds that he just shovels all the dirt back on top of it. And he's like, I don't ever want to go back there. I'm good. And, you know, I don't want to know. I don't need to know. And then when he becomes Superman, he's like, I, I need to know. He's like, Lois is right. Uh, you know, I need to know. And, um, so he goes back. It, you, you should watch it. Give it a shot. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. It has some really great beats, but there's stuff they could work on for sure. Um, you know, it's not the Bruce Tim Batman animated universe, Superman, or, you know, any of that. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's a different take. It's new. It's got elements from like J. Michael Straczynski's Superman Earth One, which is really great, where Clark's in the hood at the beginning saving people. And, you know, it's just like, you know, I didn't expect it to be so good from the, you know, the, the 30 second snippet I, I, in the write up I saw, I was like, I have no interest in seeing, you know, cub interns and what are they doing? No, it's really good. I'm excited to see where they go. Yeah, it. I mean, you've 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 definitely put it on the uh, it's worth watching level. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. And if I have a spare half an hour here or there, or even yeah. if I'll just throw it on when I'm at work on the, in the background. You can go to see what it's like. Right. In keeping with Superman on the other thing, you know, there's two two beats we'll go on. One, Superman and Lois, I forgot how damn good that is. I've got to yeah. go back and finish season two because I'm like three episodes away from finishing season two. And I haven't started season three where Lex Luthor comes in. And everyone says season three is by far the best. But I guess season three ends with Doomsday. And it's the cliffhanger, but it ends with Doomsday. And they said they do an amazing adaptation of doomsday on screen like far better than what we got I, with Zack snyder i saw i did see that the uh, someone said that this is the best doomsday we've had in 15 years of um yeah superman live action i was like oh man i wonder, wonder when that wonder when that came out and then i read oh it's superman and lois that's that's crazy yeah very crazy so basically if you remember you watched the first episode i know yeah. i've had you watch that the oh yeah i watched the first couple the first episode was movie-esque well the budget they put into this season finale is definitely up there with the movies again. It's like they Good. they put their budget into this finale. So mm-hmm. it's not chintzy or anything. And um, so that's interesting. And then the final Superman note before we delve into toys is they've, um, uh, what's it called? Broke the casting for Superman Legacy, which is um, an actor I've never heard of. I'm sure he's in things, but David Corinsweat. And I got to tell you, 
it's one of those things you look real quick, you think you're looking at Henry Cavill again. I saw thing. that. Yeah. And I, I'm great with that choice. I'm yeah. freaking great with it. He, the issue I think they're going to run into is that um, people are going to think it is Henry Cavill. It's almost like yeah. you, you've got it so close to who Henry, to, to Henry Cavill so that. Weird. Yeah. And it's like, he, I saw a picture of him in an article where he had a mustache just like Henry Cavill did for Mission Impossible. And I thought it was Henry Cavill for Mission Impossible. And it's David Corrin's sweat. And I'm like, man, this guy is like a body double for Henry Cavill. I mean, he's not as big and chiseled as Henry Cavill is currently. However, I sent you the thing on um, Twitter of Henry yes. Cavill when he did his um, screen test. Yeah, he, he doesn't really look good. huge at all. No, but he was still very... Like, Definitely bigger than Christopher Reeve and Brandon Routh at that oh, yeah. time. But yeah, I think this is great because I was worried it was going to be, um, what's his name? Nicholas something who played the Beast from, um, you know, X-Men First Class. I just had no interest. Yes, in that. yeah. And, you know, it's just Robert Pattinson. I mean, he was the uh, runner up to uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman. So I was like, oh, they're going to give him the Superman gig. I don't want like a, you know, hey, let's put a really, you know, nuanced actor in the Superman role and let's, you know, see where it goes. I think it works best when you have an unknown, like Christopher Reeve, you just strike mm -hmm. gold. Superman is not about the script more than just, you know, about the person playing it. And I think they did a great job with that in the both most iterations. I think yeah. as long as they don't do... But, um, What's his name did with uh, Superman Returns and try to make it that it's, you know, the second coming of Christopher Reeve or the second coming of Henry Cavill. I think they'll do just fine. Like, yeah, like let, 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 the guy, let the guy put his own spin on things. Yeah, yes, exactly. Exactly. Let him do his own thing and make it his own. Don't make it like a love letter to Richard Donner, like Brian Singer did with, uh, Brandon Routh. That yeah, was like exactly. That was horribly bad. Um, I, I think to a lot of it is that you have um, you have these love letters to different things, and it can be great. Like like Dial sure. of Destiny was worked so well, but yeah, the difference with Indiana Jones and Superman is that Superman, like you were never gonna have one actor play Superman. And then that that would uh -huh. be it because Superman as Correct. a character has had so many different designs in the comics that it you you couldn't have anything like you know you you expect it. In the, right. Indiana Jones has had multiple people playing him, but at different age gaps. Yeah, yeah, never right? the, the the main. Right. Ex yeah. ex exactly, and, and I don't, and I think for that reason you won't see, and hopefully we will, we will never see Indiana Jones seven, eight, and nine set in right. uh, in right. between you know, whatever movies, because yeah, it, it just, I don't think it would work. Um, yeah. It's exactly like, you know, Robert Downey Jr. With Iron Man, he made the role so much his own. Exactly. That I, that I think if you do Iron Man again, you can do it because Iron Man could be a mantle that's passed, but you can't mm -hmm. have Iron Man be Tony Stark with somebody else's the character. I, I think the, the only way you could do it is if you recast it and it's 20 years, you know, another, in another no, 10 years after Downey Jr. Last played Iron Man. Or yeah. 15 or 20, because people have long memories. But right. after a significant amount of time has passed, yeah, that you you see a, you see Tony Stark come back again. I think yeah. it's the only way to do it. Yeah, and, and delving off into that tangent before we close on toys, and I only have like seven percent on my phone, so we'll we'll make it pretty short, and sweet. <laughs> and I'm walking the dog. That's what you heard the door opening. I um, do, I didn't hear the door opening. Funny. Oh, enough. good. I'm getting more ninja esque, but um. Yeah, so supposedly Tony Stark is coming back for um, Avengers. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be called the Kang Dynasty anymore, but the next Avengers movie, he's supposed to be back. Mm. And he's already been spotted on set, suppose, on set supposedly for um, a different movie and riding around in supercars. Now people are like, oh, maybe it's Robert Downey's show that he's doing about supercars because he has a show. It seems to be conspicuously going around at the same time as being on set with this. Um, oh, he's supposed to be in Captain America. Um, what's it called? Uh, Brave New World. Mm. He's supposed to be in there with Sam Wilson. 
So Brady, stop going near the transformer. My dog loves to go near the transformer that's sitting outside. And it's like, it says, do not go near this. You know what I mean? He just yep. sort of gravitates to it. I feel um, like my cat would do that. And just because he's, oh, I can't do this. Let me do this. Yeah, my dog's an asshole like that. So, um, but yeah, no. So, I mean, we'll see for what it's worth because I don't know. I feel like that's such big news that it's inevitably going to get out. But I, I feel like, yeah. you know, the theater would, I mean, not the theater, the, the movie company would want to get ahead of it and be like, we're announcing this. Like, you know, DC did with Michael Keaton. They're mm-hmm. not going to keep the secret forever. So it's like just, yeah. um, I, I, I think, good, how you, are you? I like, Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Sorry. No, oh, no. yeah. My dog. It's just my neighbors. Um, you have a good one. We might have to edit that. Oh, yeah. I'll cut that out. But, um, yeah, no. So, basically, uh, you know, I feel like they would want to jump ahead of that and say, Robert Downey Jr., and get as many eyes on it as possible. So, I don't know. I feel like yeah. it could be some people wishful thinking because he is have a show about supercars Mm, i i i genuinely think the only reason marvel got away with not having uh toby Maguire and andrew garfield leak is because andrew got they andrew garfield was clearly on mission to deny it every possible opportunity brilliant denial that will only work once yeah no one will ever believe him again in any movie role that he says he's not part of once it leaks he's he's sunk oh i I agree um, but I mean, but and the yeah. thing is, it, I don't think, I think not only that, but I think it's also going to be the same for, um, like, if I breathe out and you I'm not in it. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. No, I really, I swear to God, I'm, yeah, sure. Right, yeah. pal. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, what, you don't believe me? No, not a chance. No, because we were Garfielded. Yeah. So Garfielded is a great, great uh, phrase. Um. Yeah, so let's jump into toys. San Diego is, you know, two weeks around the corner. Um, Marvel's been, well, not Marvel, Hasbro and Marvel have been very, very conspicuously quiet because they said they've got a shit ton of stuff to reveal at the convention. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is, you know, like the Hazlab, the G.I. Joe Dragonfly. Mm. Hasn't hit its second tier yet. We're going into like, I think, nine, eight, seven or eight days, maybe even seven days. One week left and it has not hit that second tier. I do not think this is a case of Galactus where FOMO is going to get people and it's just going to fund all the tiers. I think what's funded is, you know, it might limp to the second tier. Yeah. You ain't going to get the third tier and maybe not even a reveal. Yeah, you know? I. it's funny. I, I honestly thought it would get a good chunk of it done. But last time I checked, I think I had about a... 1500 people left to get to the second tier i don't know what it's at right now it's really crawling really really crawling and you know it's going to be funded so the project gets made people are going to get their dragonfly which is great i actually had to cancel my dragonfly full spoiler because there's just so much in the world going on with collecting you can't collect everything Mm. and they just broke that thundercats cat's lair by super seven is being released very soon and it's going to be crowdfunded again. I'm like, oh, my God. I think the crowdfunding experiment is is really – I think people are getting crowdfund fatigue, to be honest with you. You're seeing a lot more crowdfund failures than you are seeing successes lately. And, um, you know, Cat's Lair is a dream project for me. It was a, it was my one of my grail toys. I still remember it. As a kid, Easter morning, my dad gave me Cat's – well, the Easter bunny gave me Cat's <laughs> Lair. And um, – one of my all-time favorite things. So Super 7 is going to be doing a full-scale Cat's Lair for 7-inch scale. And here's the thing. I'm like, well, Snake Mountain was 600. I'm like, so, and that was, you know, years ago before inflation, but like four years ago. That means Cat's Lair is going to be like 900 to 1,000 for sure because they released one of the photos of Lion though sitting at the command center, just him. And that one window alone is like really, really big. So I'm like, oh, this thing's gonna have LEDs and all that shit too. They kept it to 650. That's impressive. And I'm like, Holy given the shit. size of the of what that, yeah, right. Yep, and it's supposed to be as big, if not bigger. They haven't let it out of the bag. Well, I was gonna say the cat out of the bag, but they haven't let it out of the bag yet. That you know, the size compared to Snake Mountain, but to make it 50 bucks more than what Snake Mountain costs is insane with LEDs and everything and much more sculpting and much more 
of a difficult design. Mm. Um, but yeah, it might be like four feet tall. I mean, not four feet tall. It might be three and a half feet tall by like four feet long or something like that, which is crazy. So I'm excited for it. And they're allowing payment plans too. Like they're going to not only do a crowdfund window, they're going to do payment plans, which is great because it's not a thing of Super 7 going, hey, it just dropped. You have, you know, one week to buy this thing. Yeah, it's, so it's a like, payment plan, I think, especially when it's that expensive and you know it's not yeah. coming out for a while. Yeah. That, I think, is going to work in their favor. Yeah, but Super 7 has had success with their bigger things before. Like right now, they're turtle fan funded. I mean, they didn't do crowdfunding, but they just did it right out the gate. They got enough numbers to warrant yeah. it. The Thunder Tank was a success for them too, enough numbers to warrant it. But I think I don't really like crowdfunding super much, but this is the way to go with Cat's Lair, I feel, because a lot of people missed out on Snake Mountain because it was just a drop. Mm -hmm. And it was like, hey, here's Snake Mountain. You got to buy it now. Well, no one had 600 plus 100 shipping, like just out of nowhere to buy. And now that thing's like $2,000. So it's one of those. And it's also Super 7's not like, I don't think they're like Mattel, where they take it immediately up front. Like Mattel, to the Eternia, they're just like, boom, 500 out that day. And you're like, what the hell? So yeah. um, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm very much looking forward to it, but I wanted to talk, you know, toys and like what, what we think is going on. Masterverse, I think, has got some really cool stuff coming down the pipe. Don't know what's going on with that Skeletor right now. The new adventures, they haven't, it's going to be a Target exclusive, but they haven't seemed to move the needle on it. it too. Yeah, I don't know what's yeah. going on. I haven't seen it anywhere pop up. So I hope it didn't get canceled because I saw like a German video and it said canceled, but like, I'm like, well, maybe that's just for Germany. Like, I'm hoping that figure didn't get canceled because that's the one I'm looking forward to the most of the massive Earth. I, I, it's funny. I can't imagine it would be because that's the kind of thing that they know people would, um, yeah. would jump for. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, and then Marvel Legends is supposed to reveal their HasLab at San Diego. Okay. Yeah. I, I, does anyone at this point think it's not Giant Man? I mean, no, I, the thing is at this point, if it's not giant man, it's going to be something really good to get interest because I just don't think giant man is, I don't think giant man is going to get that much interest anyway, unless he's at yeah. a much fairer price point, like closer to 200 than anything else. Yeah. Like 175. Yeah. That's the way I can see it happening because now you're going to have more Hasbro failures and you know, a row also, um, what's it called? Uh, Star Wars Hasbro is doing the vintage collection uh this vehicle called the ghost i think it's from rogue one it's like a big starship now kind of like the razor crest which is right up everyone's alley but i don't think that will fund too like i really just don't think right I now think i think people are hitting crowdfund fatigue the go is the ghost from um shit what's it the uh the the, the animation show um Bone wars no the other one uh fuck, what is oh, it rebels yeah you might be right. I think it is from Rebels. Is it from Rebels? Like, because if it's from Rebels, I can see it fund. I can see it do it, having a chance to fund. If it's from Rogue One, I, I don't think it's gonna. Yeah, because well, the people on those animated shows have such a cult following. They're very like revered. You know, the Clone yeah. Wars is so. Yeah, you're right. I think you are very right. But um, yeah, I mean, toy and toy news is always super interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just there's so much. Toys are constantly coming out every day, every week. I can't really see anything that Marvel's going to do. I mean, I know they're going to announce, I, in my heart, I think they're going to announce the X-Men 97 figures. Whatever that will be, you know? And yeah, I hope I agree. that's all I can say is I really hope they're good. I, I am expecting Magneto in that classic big M costume. For the comic books, that's what I'm thinking we're going to get. But I don't know. I did see a Rogue. That like squeaked out. She looks pretty good. Um, I don't know. What do you think's gonna go on for Toy speculation? I honestly don't know because I've actually been I'm oddly out of the loop of it. The last few things I've picked up have been vintage uh, stuff, like um, the Bat Rope Batman from '89 Keaton movie. I've got I picked up an older uh, Wolverine figure, like the Toy Biz, like lo loose without half the stuff he came with. Yeah, so I've been picking up stuff like that lately, more than um, 
uh, anything new. I mean, I, I showed you the pictures of what I what I'd found. So yeah, um, yeah, I've been oddly out of the loop, and I it's funny. Like after not following it as much, right? Like, oh, do I really need to keep buying this stuff? Like, what is it that I want now that I really want? So I'm yeah. half tempted to go into the some of the, like the retro, you know, the um, reaction style figure just because those look great on the wall. Yeah, they do. So I'm, I'm half tempted to start like getting those for the wall and and kind of call it on some of the bigger figures just for, for simply for the the space factor. Um, like I, I picked up an Eredin from the Witcher series. He's cool, mm-hmm. but I've got him on display with Geralt. I'm like, it doesn't really work there because those aren't the most uh, poseable of figures. They 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 like they're McFarlane, right? So they, they you can't yeah. get the most dynamic of poses, right? Um, so I'm like, man, it's not that I don't want Eredin. It's that I don't feel that I can do much with him. Yeah, it's um, I'm getting to that point, too. Like, I'm almost Marvel Legend completely out. Yeah. Like, really at that point where they would have to come out with a clone saga wave to really suck me in. Yeah, like, like that's just it. There's there's very few now that are out or coming out that I feel the need to actively hunt for. Like if I found Chamber for cheap, yeah, I'd grab him. Yeah, here he's a good figure. I mean, yeah, exactly. So um like, there's no X-Men figures coming out that I either I either don't have or haven't right. or you haven't already ordered for me that I want. But they don't set the world on fire at the moment. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And the price um, point's getting to the point where I don't care enough. Like, I'm not going to pick them up on a whim anymore. No, exactly. Like, I mean, I'm getting Hawkeye in the Sky Cycle. That's, that's yeah. for sure. And then there's really not much. Um, some of the animated stuff here and there, like I'm getting yeah. the Spider-Man. I mean, the Goblin and uh, Mary Jane 2-pack. But, mm. you know, I'm mostly I'm, I'm building my Mafex collection. So, like, I have Wolverine, Gambit, Cyclops, and Magneto. And those are all really amazing figures. So I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to go back track and get Jean Grey. They're going to inevitably put out Rogue. Rogue will probably be coming in the, this coming San Diego solicitations. I think she'll be revealed. And um, yeah, I'm just really out of most of the stuff. Like McFarlane stuff, I'm out of too. Um, I Except for I'm getting the Tim Drake classic 90s Robin. I pre-ordered him yeah. to go with you know Nightfall Batman that's pre-ordered. That's it. Other than that, they really got to hit me on nostalgia beats, like to really make things. The only company that's going to get me guaranteed is NECA because Turtles and right now Gargoyles is still going full steam. Mm -hmm. You know, I want Xanatos, which, you know, they've already I've already got him ordered, but I want Xanatos and his red armor. Like I want like those kind of figures. But Marvel Legends is going to have to work like hellishly overtime for me to, you know, be like, I need that Marvel Legend. Sure, I'll probably do the thing when it gets revealed and be like, oh my god, and pre-order it on Big Bad Toy Store, <clears throat> and then I'll probably cancel it two weeks later when the phone, when the the, the luster wears when off. When the FOMO is gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, I don't know. I mean, I've been collecting toys hard for harder than I ever have for the last three and a half years, and I'm starting to get fatigued. I'm starting to be like. I can let that sit on the shelf for a little while. I don't need mm-hmm. it right now. Well, especially when you you get so much and you don't open it or you don't. That's what it is for me. Right? It's the not opening. I have piles and piles and piles and piles and piles and piles in my closet. And I'm like, okay, how, wh- what am I really doing here? Like, how am I, I appreciating this? That's just like, I'm, I'm finding the same thing with comics. Like I'm buying stuff. And I'm not reading it. I'm like at, that, that, at what point do I need to acknowledge that I'm not the same collector that I was? Like I I'm not reading the same way. I'm, yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So, I mean, in San Diego should be a trip. I mean, it's a bummer yep. that there's no DC uh, or Marvel movie presence there. They're all I actually up. think I think, though, in in some ways, and, and I know we're running low on time because you're. Yeah, we are. You're, you're, no, you're I, physically I, I, running low. Yeah, I'm good, but, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, like, I, I feel that we're um, in a good spot where there's no DC or Marvel news. Maybe it'll go back to some of the more uh, say, hey. Look at this preview of, of this independent show, or this is what's coming yeah. up on for comics. So it's getting towards less of a a spectacle of people going for movie news and trying yeah. to speculate on what's coming out, and more maybe yeah. of a um, comics and toys. Exactly. 
and, 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 and even if it's like independent, like TMNT movie news and stuff like that. Like, I mean, Todd McFarlane's ever the opportunist. I wonder if he'll take the time to announce, like, fully announce the Spawn movie that everyone's been like waiting for since '97 to be announced. I wonder if this will be. He'll be like, "Oh, Marvel and DC aren't there. I got a movie." You know what I mean? Just to like it, really get kind of, it. I would surprise. Me. It wouldn't surprise me. What would surprise me is if it's anywhere even close to being ready to go. So not. There's, there's no way it's even in. I bet you it doesn't even have a full script. I guarantee you that thing has not a full script. No. Jamie Foxx has been signed to that movie for about six and a half, seven years now. And they haven't heard a peep out of it. Great right? casting. Like, off from Al Simmons, but like, Jamie Foxx, what the hell are you doing, man? Like, he's, you know? he's not getting any younger. And he yeah. can play that character phenomenally well. Yeah, and you have Jeremy Renner tied to it, too. I don't know how long that will... I mean, I don't know, know if Jeremy Renner is going to do acting still. I, yeah, don't, I don't know. know. I don't, so, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting time. Maybe it will be a back-to-form of, you know, a comic con instead of a pop culture con. Mm -hmm. I would be interested to see it. Um, you know, it's just I'm being smarter, as smart as I can be. I mean, I'm always toy hunting almost daily, but, like, being smarter with the big ticket items in my wallet. Is, the thing is, some you, you can hunt and not buy, right? Yeah. Like it's sometimes yeah, yeah. it's a case of uh, like, oh, cool, look at this. I don't need it, but that's really cool to see. That's what it is right now with a lot of the Masterverse stuff. I've come across Whiplash like twenty times. I still don't have too bad. All these things that I thought I would like scoop up in the first day, mm -hmm. you know, I just haven't grabbed. If I come across Prince Adam from the Masterverse, I'll grab him. It's what I'm looking forward to. You know, and of course, that new adventure is Skeletor. But yeah. right now, other than that, there's none that I have to have in my hand that I won't, you know, be like, I can get that down the road for, you yeah. know, yeah. a decent price. So Exactly. It's like, And I found that the Masterverse stuff, generally, you you can find it after the yeah. fact for, for a good price. Yeah, they don't, they don't seem to scalp very well, which is great. No. It, it, it's actually a relief that some toys don't. Like... I'll I'll end on this note. McFarlane, I don't know if you saw the news, but McFarlane released their multiverse 89 Batman and Batmobile two pack on Friday. I did see that. And people lost their fucking shit. They were so angry over this. It lasted like four minutes on Amazon. I got it. And I'm sitting there going, oh my God, it's exactly the same Batmobile. It's just it's in matte. And it's like a little bit closer to the 89. But I think it's just for me, it's 89 property is just going to grab me. Mm -hmm. However, the sculpt looked pretty decent. It's not Michael Keaton. I don't think any like non import company can get that likeness right. You know, SH Figure Arts did a horrible job with the Michael Keaton um, Flash Batman. I got to show you it. I ordered it anyway, but I'll, I'll show you the face unmasked. Um, but they screwed up one of the main pivotal points of the 89 Batman. And I'm like, wait a minute, why does the Batman? have neck articulation because it looks like Christian Bale's cowl on the Michael Keaton design. And I'm like, ah, man. However, people went nuts, dude. And you know, when I say the reason my point was four minutes after this thing went out on um, stock, I saw an eBay listing with seven available for $300 each. Holy fuck. This thing was $74 with Batman in the Batmobile, which is an amazing price for Todd. I got to give him credit. Yeah, that's a fantastic it, price. Yeah, because the Batmobile that I have now was $69.99 and worth every penny. He's basically adding you Batman for like four bucks more, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, $300 a piece because people had no limit on Amazon and scalpers bought like 10 or whatever. And the other thing is this drop was handled so piss poorly. The link wasn't working, going live. It said, go to McFarland toys on IG and you go to the link and it kept leading you to other places. So people were missing it because it wouldn't like the link wasn't live and you had to go to Paternia on, um, you know, Twitter to get the real link. And, Luckily, Preternia is on top of Toy News 24-7. That guy does the Lord's work. But I don't know how he does it, honestly. I don't know either because he's always on, like always. I don't know how he gets every link possible, but mm -hmm. he does a great job. 
But there's so many people that the reason for this being re-released was everyone, a lot of people missed the Batmobile that came out for coinciding with the Flash movie that I got. So now you just shit on them again. And like, I'm hoping McFarlane Toys does the right thing and says, you know what? This was a shit show. Let me put up another wave because, and announce it properly with much more stuff. Because this is the frustration that collectors are going through is not only are we fatigued, but the stuff we really want are these ridiculous exclusives that are just like near impossible to get. And people are like, I- I'm over this. If it's going to be this hard, I'm just out. You know what I mean? So yeah. that that's my two cents. I figured that's what we could end on. There's going to be lots more to talk about in the coming weeks. You know, I, I got to catch up on Secret Invasion. I really enjoyed episode one a lot. Um you know, we got Ahsoka coming in a couple of weeks. Like, there's, there's going to be a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. I was about to bring up a new show that I started watching, but we'll save that for another time. Yeah, because otherwise we'll delve into it. Exactly. So we'll, uh, at some point in the future, we'll do a TV show. And yeah. when I say TV show, I mean TV podcast, where we talk about yeah. what we're watching on TV. Uh, and yeah. when I say TV, I mean episodic content that isn't a movie. Yeah, exactly. That's streaming. Correct. um right so yeah like the the world the world is changing we consume our media differently but ultimately we're all, always going to call certain things certain things so uh on that note folks have a uh, have a great weekend enjoy whatever day you're listening to us on um if you are on spotify apple music whatever thank you for for tuning in if you're on youtube Absolutely. again we appreciate you at some point the plan is is still to uh give you something to look at but uh god knows when and uh if and we apologize in advance for what you'll be looking at um i have no final thoughts i'm going to stop recording because if i don't we'll keep rambling for another 10 to 15 minutes take care Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.